Hello, my name is David Plyler, and I'm one of the producers for Concerts from the Library of Congress. I'm here today uh, just before a concert by Ars Nova Copenhagen, who we've been trying to get here for many, many years, I think about eight years now. And I'm joined today by Thomas Kirby from, uh, from the group, uh, who's going to speak with me about the program and uh, what the group is all about. So welcome, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, <laughs> and us. <laughs> yeah. yes. uh, we, you know, we, we really did, I think, start this conversation in 2015. Yes. And it's just taken this long for it to finally work out. So yes. I'm, I'm so pleased that uh, we finally get to hear yeah. you. So <laughs> <in are person>. we. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I thought one of the things that would be interesting is just to kind of talk about this, this program, which is quite uh, a wonderful program. Uh, you, you're well known, Ars Nova Copenhagen is well known for um, blending older musics with new music, mm -hmm. and this one does it in a very lovely way. Um, and so I thought, uh, what, what can you say about this title, My End is My Beginning? That's well, th that, that was Paul's title, Paul Hillier, who is our chief conductor, uh, or actually, I should say, was our chief conductor, because this, was, this is going to be his last performance with us mm -hmm. uh, uh, after having been our chief conductor for uh, more than 20 years, so it's sort of a big day. <laughs> right, right. But uh, it was his title because um, um, we did this program also in in, uh, in Denmark uh, four times in January, and uh, and so the title sort of suggests that um, now something uh, ends and something else will begin. Right, right. Both for Paul and for the group, and uh, and then quite literally, you have a piece by Machot yes. that. Um, that is that kind of a, 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 a backwards and forwards sort of canon. Yes, it's it's incredible that it's even possible to, to write a piece like that, but but it can actually be sung backwards and it would sound more or less the same. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you would have to change the text. Right. Or, or, or <laughs> not do the text backwards, but but anyway, it's uh, that's possible. <laughs> right. Well, it's a wonderful... Um, what, what you would call a... a Palindrome or palindrome on. Yeah, palindrome, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah no, those, th those types of like uh, puzzle canon pieces are always just fascinating yeah. to see, especially older pieces. I mean, that's 14th century there, and you know, we're working. Yes. So th that's quite something. Um, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, just speaking about the uh, kind of the where the old and the new meet in an interesting way, you have a pair of pieces on this program that um, I listen to the recordings, and I'm just astounded by how much they have in common. And this is the um, Orlando Gibbons, Cries of London, mm -hmm. and then in an arrangement by Paul Hillier. Yes. Um, and then the uh, Goodmanson, Holmgreen, um, Three Stages, or the Cries of Copenhagen. Could you say a little bit about like what those pieces are about? I can. Um, the Gibbons piece, uh, is actually not the only one of its kind. That was, uh, there were a, a couple of pieces uh, around that time, uh, all um, using street cries, uh, sort of uh, working them into each other uh, and uh, doing that, making them into music. Uh, I think they actually went out uh, into the streets and, uh, and uh, uh, registered exactly what the merchants uh, cried out uh, for selling their goods and so on. And, and then, as closely as possible, built that into the music. Uh, and Gibbons was one of those composers uh, who did that. And, uh, and then this Danish composer with whom we worked uh, very closely uh, until he died a, a few years ago, um, thought that it would be interesting to do the same uh, from a modern perspective. Uh, and, and so we had... Uh, Earlier in the 20th century, another Danish composer, Vaughn Holmbo, who mm. collected street cries uh, from that time. And some of those has been built into the piece, and also street noises of other kinds have been built into it. Uh, and that uh, constitutes the first of three movements. It's called Three Stages. Uh, and the second movement then takes place in the forest uh, and, and concentrates on bird singing. Uh, which is also uh, an old tradition to do that. Um, uh, there are a number of uh, also Renaissance composers who did that, such as Schoenke. Uh, uh, what, yeah, he made a piece of, th of that kind. Uh, Chant des Oiseaux, it's called. Uh, and, and 
and then uh, Pele Gumerson Holmgren did that also. And in the last movement, he builds the two, uh, the first two movements into one, sort of one on top of the other, and also adds some new material. Very intricate and intricate and, and yeah, well well done. Yeah, no, it's amazing. I think uh, one one question I had just listening to it, I didn't actually get to see the score to this. How much of the um, how much of the material is is left up to the performers to you know, interpret how they're going to, to do the cries, or is there a lot of information given to you to... Um, um, are we not now talking about Gibbons or... Uh, Either one. Yeah, okay. Um, well, the, the music is there and, and is sort of given, mm -hmm. but of course uh, the actual performance is rather free. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, especially maybe in the Gibbons, the, the singers really act the piece. Right. And... and and try to sell their goods to the audience. And uh, <laughs> sometimes we've even had them uh, walking uh, about, uh, <laughs> uh, engaging with the audience. And I, I'm not sure if we're doing that here, but <laughs> right. it, that depends a little bit on, on the venue. And right, that. right. Well, that's, uh, it's a fascinating thing. And it's one of those, uh, <clears throat> I think that there are some carryovers in some of the other works that you do that go kind of take one extreme or another as we look at the rest of the program. And I know that one of the uh, pieces that was added um, fairly recently is a work by Gavin Bryars. Yeah. Um, and, and so ended Kant's traveling in this world. Yeah. And this was a piece that was uh, commissioned by Ars Nova. Is that right? I, or or maybe Paul I, Hillier might have done it for the I Hilliard think, Ensemble. Maybe. I think it was for the Hilliard Ensemble, yes. And so this is an arrangement for mixed voices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this, um, it's it's a beautiful work. And, yes. um I'm, I'm so pleased that you added it, added to it, uh, added it to the program. Um, is there anything you want to say about this piece? Is it? Well, it, it's a, sort of a strange piece. Uh, I mean, text-wise, it's. <laughs> I forget who wrote the text, but but it's 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 about it's it's, it's a prose text, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> which is sort yeah, of yeah. Uh, uh, unusual, right? Uh, and uh, but, but also very interesting, I find. Yeah. <laughs> And and musically, it's it's just beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, one of the other uh, one of the other works that's kind of at the other end of things from a text perspective yes. is the Nurgor um, work, Vian Kind. Uh, yes. So you you have. I know that uh, that Nurgor had the, has this uh, uh, interest and obsession almost with Wolfley and these uh, texts and, and a lot of his work. Um, but there's also some um, some by Roca, but the the text is actually um, kind of nonsense syllable yeah. type, uh, and so you're the how how does that come together in terms of how you put that together? Are you thinking of it as sort of an instrumental ensemble, or how how do you get the right? Um, is is Nurgar very specific with how he wants things? Um, I don't think he is really. Hmm. Uh, it's. It's written out very carefully, this nonsensical text, um, like gagang, uh, and so on, uh, which doesn't mean anything. Uh, it, uh, and and then there's there's a, this character who um, who is sort of the the main person, at least in the third movement, who is, um, I think, incorporating some of uh, both his own uh, problems, mm. uh, in that he's he's uh, not coordinated with the rest of the ensemble, and and he gets increasingly um, uh, worried and 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 can't find himself in 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 the situation and mm. and his role in in life and so on, <laughs> and it's it's sort of a picture uh, of that. It's sort of a startling effect. Of yes, it, it is. is yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's and, really. yeah. Oh. And then in the middle, we have a, a more traditionally beautiful uh, setting of, of the Rilke text. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I actually first came across that piece, I want to say it was about 20 years ago, in a recording of yours, or at least I think it was, your, I don't know if, if you recalled Ars Nova Copenhagen at the time, but it was uh, in a Zinger de Gerten. Yes. Um, CD that I think was about 20 years ago. And yes. that's when I first 
st started to become aware of uh, yeah. your group and what you were doing, <laughs> and also uh, Nergor's choral music, which is just, uh, I think, astounding. And so I'm so pleased that mm -hmm. you're you're doing it on this program, yes. so thank you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the Danish call classic, I would say. Right. Yeah, and Kind. <laughs> so. Uh, there's so much great music. Um, you know, one, maybe we'll, I would like to hear a bit more about some of your other projects that you're doing, but first, could you speak a bit about um, a piece that I haven't heard yet, uh, Caroline Shaw's How to Fold the Wind? Yeah. And, um, and what, is, what is that piece like, and how does it relate to other pieces of hers that you've done? I think you've recorded some of her music. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what to say. I, I, um, <laughs> it's, um, it's, uh, I think she has a very particular style, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I like it very much. Uh, the text for this piece is uh, sort of mysterious, I would say. It's not absolutely clear what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was, uh, to some extent, uh, inspired by the Japanese uh, paper folding technique called origami. Origami, yes, yeah. um, and uh, and that's that's f from there the title arose, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, but it's not very um, dominant, predominant in in the in the text. I think mm -hmm. it's it's about all sorts of things, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> and, and and not uh, and not very. Not very clear uh, f to me, at least. Um, but um, but musically, again, it's 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 very it's very like her. I think mm -hmm. I, I know, only know a few of her pieces, but uh, but she writes very well for voices. Mm -hmm. I think we all agree. And uh, we recorded another of her pieces, uh, which I can't remember the title of at this point, but. Um, um, I remember yeah. it was on a CD called And, I think. Yes, exactly, yes, yes. yes. But I can't remember <laughs> off hand <laughs> either the title. But. Uh, <laughs> that's, yeah. well, that's wonderful. I mean, we're so glad that you're um, always promoting new music and putting forward new things. And so this, yes. and this piece is fairly recent. It's yes, it, it was a co-commission uh, we, did, we did with, uh, 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 actually, um, uh, Carnegie Hall mm -hmm. and, and uh, an ensemble in Chicago, uh, mm. and uh, an Irish choir, and a festival in, in Ireland also. So, rather a big enterprise. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yes, and Asnova per first performed the piece in 2020, mm. uh, uh, in the middle of the COVID uh, right. <laughs> situation. Uh, wow. we, we had a, a, sh a short period when we were allowed to do concerts, and. and Actually, it was the, the Irish choir that should have first performed, but they had to cancel, and, and then we had also our performance scheduled already, and so, yeah. So you're able to slip yeah. it in before everything. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And we have a recording coming up also. Oh, fantastic, of this piece. Of this piece, yes. Oh, fantastic, oh, good to hear. Um, you know, you have, you've, had, you've been around since, I think, 1979, mm -hmm. I think the yeah. for the, you've been in existence. And you've recorded so many things over that time, um, including a lot of uh, Danish music and other music. Um, what what sorts of projects have you been? Uh, is that is that kind of one of your uh, major extra con contributions that you make um, in addition to you know just performing live? Is that it? Just seems like such a, a wonderful uh, discography with so, so many works in it. Um, is that how many do you work on at any given time? How many projects like that? Like and like recording projects. You know, so. Well, these days, unfortunately, we can't afford doing uh, so many recordings as we used used to do. Mm. Uh, yeah, we're we're a bit um, short of money. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> and uh, and recording is expensive. Yeah. Uh, and and we have to to some extent choose between doing concerts and and recordings. Right, right. But uh, but we try to record at least once a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what sorts, I know that you were doing a project with the uh, composer Wang Ro yeah, um, yeah. recently. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, actually, uh, from here we will be going on to, uh, to uh, a performance in Blacksburg, mm. uh, Virginia, at the Virginia Tech mm -hmm. of, uh, of this exact piece, uh, which is a staged performance by Wang Ro, uh, set to texts by himself, uh, uh, um, related to uh, some 
ancient uh, Chinese myths, um, uh, and hence the title, uh, because it's, they, they came from a, a manuscript that was found near Shanghai, I think, a few thousand years ago. <laughs> Oh, no, no, not found, but oh, right. written then, yes. Right, right. Yes. And it's a staged work, so... It's a staged work, yeah. yes, and, uh, and with uh, some puppeteering also. Um, yeah, and, and it's very interesting, I, I think. Well, that's exciting. So, yeah. yeah. What sorts of... Uh, how long is this tour? Is this... Yeah, so you're going there next and then... Yeah, that's, that's actually the only two performances we have uh, oh, okay. this time, yeah. Okay. This time around. Well, that's... Um, I mean, at least, at least you get to... Do you get to take a breather when you get back, or do you have another set of projects that are coming up? Uh, actually, we have a, 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 a pause then, mm. uh, and the next uh, larger project we have will be in early June, uh, and, and that's going to be a, a Nordic choir festival, which will be traveling to all of the Nordic capital cities, and uh, apart from Arsene of Copenhagen also, will also involve uh, uh, ensembles from uh, from the other countries as well. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Is that something that you do yearly? or? Uh? No, we've done it twice before mm -hmm. with the same partners uh, and we've sort of be become good friends <laughs> nice. and try to, try to do it whenever it's possible uh, to get the funding for it. Sure, uh, sure. Which is sort of every three years. Right, right. Yeah. Was well, there anything else you'd like to tell us about? Mm. No, I'm, oh. <laughs> I'm just very happy that it's finally, that we finally succeeded to make this happen. Likewise, yeah. I, I, we've been, uh, yeah, like I said, corresponding now for about eight years. And yeah. uh, so uh, thank you so much for joining me today and yes. I'm looking forward to the concert so much. Um, uh, really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>